Have you ever seen anything like this, Professor, in our history, uh, three or four months before presidential election? I don't. I haven't, but you're the expert. Tell me, have you ever seen this before? Absolutely not. I've summarized American politics today in one sentence. Republicans have no principles. Democrats have no spine. Republicans have united, claiming to be the party of law and order behind an insurrectionist, the only losing candidate not to accept the peaceful transfer of power, a multiple felon, a twice impeached president, a civilly convicted uh, sexual abuser, colloquially raped, convicted civilly of massive financial fraud. But the Democrats have no spine. I have never seen or looked at in my study of American politics since the founding, a spineless, feckless party at the first sign of adversity, mercilessly trashing their incumbent president and their presumptive nominee selected not by Adam Schiff and Jamie Raskin or any members of Congress or donors or pollsters or James Carville and other operatives, but the Democratic voters. They are engaged in a shameful public shaming of their president, and it is a self-fulfilling, self-defeating prophecy. We'll spend weeks feeding on Joe Biden, and oh my God, his poll numbers have gone down. Of course they have. If you know his own party can't support him, obviously voters are going to have doubts. But fortunately, we don't govern by polls, and never should. If we did, George H.W. Bush should have dropped out when he was 17 points behind Mike Dukakis in June. Barack Obama should have dropped out after his first disastrous debate with Mitt Romney in 2012, when he went from eight points up to four points down in the polls. And of course, Donald Trump should have dropped out since all the polls indicated he would lose. And of course, all of these candidates won. Professor, this is a big question, and I don't know if you can answer this, but why? Why do you think this is happening to President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris? I, the, the, I mean, does the history give us the why? Why is this happening? History does not give us much guidance, except to say what the Democrats are doing is not just shameful, but self defeating. There have been presidents who withdrawn from re-election campaigns, but never at the 11th hour and 50th minute. Lyndon Johnson withdrew in March of the election year. Uh, Harry Truman withdrew early on. And of course, following this, uh, both in both instances, the Democratic Party lost to Eisenhower in 52, and then we got Richard Nixon in 1968 and almost lost our democracy. You know, if the Supreme Court immunity decision had been in effect in the 70s, Nixon would have gotten away scot-free with Watergate, and our democracy may have died 50 years ago. But what all of these critics have in common of Joe Biden, zero track record in predicting elections, yet they claim to know what the Democrats should do to be predicted winners, push Biden out, then have this, you know, mini primary brokered convention. That runs directly contrary to the verdict of history. Do you know how many times since 1900, the party holding the White House has won in an open seat election with an internal party contest? The answer is never. These folks who have no scientific basis for their opinion are, in essence, recreating the same conditions in 2016 that led to the election of Donald Trump in the first place, and they are playing right into Donald Trump's hands. You know, I've always believed it's not just the evil people who wreak havoc on this world. It's the good people who don't stop them. If they kick out Joe Biden, a lot of folks believe they'll kick out Vice President Kamala Harris, too. It could be gender. It could be race. I would, of, of course, this is our first woman vice president, so there's no history for this either. But I'd love to know uh, y- your thoughts on that. I think that's right. And our democracy is gone if it's governed by uh, wealthy donors, uh, 
elites who only care about padding their own pocketbooks. Look, in addition to the straight verdict of history, as you know, I have a prediction system, the 13 keys to the White House, that has been correct since I predicted Ronald Reagan's reelection in April 1982, almost three years ahead of time, when America was in the midst of what was then the worst recession since the Great Depression, and his approval ratings were in the gutter. By the way, 1982 poll said 60% of Americans thought Ronald Reagan was too old and should not run again. Should he have declared, I'm not running at that point? Of course, he went on to win one of the biggest landslides in history, winning all but one state. So what does my 13 keys say? Take six negative keys to predict an incumbent party loss. Biden ticks off two of my keys, incumbency, party contest. Six of the remaining 11 would have to fall. The big donors get their way. They lose both those keys. Only four more would have to fall. But, you know, if Biden is pressured out by the donors and the spineless Democrats and the media and the operatives and the pollsters, I have a plan B, which is that Biden resigns the presidency for the good of the country, which would contrast him with Trump, who's only in it for himself. Harris then becomes president, ticking off the incumbency key. And as the sitting president, she'd likely, despite the donors, be the consensus nominee, ticking off the internal party contest key. Thus, the Democrats would be two keys up to start. And again, six more keys would have to fall. Plus, they would avoid a situation where the incumbent party has always lost and create a situation of an incumbent running with no party contest where the incumbent party usually wins. Your predictions have been so accurate. And you again, you had these 13 keys. If Biden stays in the race and says, you know what, I'm not going to cave in, I'm going to stay. Do you still predict he will win? Or do you feel like these Democrats and the media have already damaged his campaign so much that he can't win? What do you think? Great question. I want to be very clear because I'm misinterpreted in this. I have not made a final prediction. Okay. So after the Democratic convention, I have said a lot would have to go wrong for Biden to lose, but that it could happen. He's down Remember, six keys and you're out as the incumbent on my system. He's definitively down to, and there are four shaky keys, third party, social unrest, foreign slash military failure, and success. All four of those would have to fall to predict his defeat. Uh, Possible, but a lot would have to go wrong. However, let me say this. I'm not psychic Gene Dixon with a crystal ball. I'm not Speaker Mike Johnson, who you saw at the convention and thinks he knows what God you know, tells the world. My system is based on history. It's very robust. It goes all the way back to 1860. It covers enormous changes. I thought it's cost developmentally and followed since 84. covers enormous changes in our politics, our society, our demography, our economy. But it is always possible that events outside the pattern of history could be so cataclysmic and so unprecedented as to shake up the race. You won't know that until afterwards, but certainly the unprecedented spectacle we're seeing among spineless self-defeating Democrats could in fact shake up this race. There's still time to recover from that, but I have never in examining American politics since the founding seen a party so intent on self-destruction. So some people say that I'm being dramatic when I say if Trump is elected, uh, uh, you know, America will fall. You're a historian. If Trump is elected, in my opinion, God forbid, what will happen? Do you think America will survive or will it literally fall as we know it? I think America will be under great stress and tension. Uh, Donald Trump is right out front on what he wants to do. His buddy is Victor Orban. J.D. Vance is even closer to Orban. So I think Donald Trump will move us very close to the Hungary model, which is you use your power as chief executive to suppress your opposition 
to suppress a free press, to reshape the government, not as independent civil servants, but as loyalists to Donald Trump. And basically, he said, I can do whatever I want as president. He said that openly. And of course, now with the Supreme Court immunity decision, he pretty much can do that. So I think we will be remade on the model of Hungary. And uh, it's a very iffy proposition whether the country can recover from that. I think it can. You know, we recovered from the crisis of slavery and the Civil War. I think we can recover from a Trump term on the model of Viktor Orban, but I think it's 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 dicey. Professor, I, you know, I often wonder how did we get here? And if I'm wrong, correct me, you're the expert. And of course, we know Democrats right now, like you said, feckless, they're a mess. But on the Republican side, I feel like it's the hate that Republicans created from the Southern strategy, Barry Goldwater, Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, the welfare queen narrative, Willie Horton, had the birther movement. I feel like Republicans for decades, they have created and, and really uh, peddled in this hate to to win win elections. And this is the avalanche that that we've hit. Um, that's how I feel like how we got here. Am, am I wrong? What are your thoughts on that? No, you're not wrong. For a long time, going all the way back to the Ku Klux Klan of the 1920s, the immigration restriction movement that demonized. In those days, it wasn't uh, so much uh, Muslims and Mexicans. It was people like my ancestors from Eastern Europe or those from Southern Europe. So there is a long tradition there. I have a new book coming out from the Notre Dame Press called The Truth About Conservatives. It's not what you think. And I talk about a hundred year history of exploiting divisions within this country and appealing to those who are worried about others, whoever the others may be. And, you know, this is a long history within the American conservative movement and has reached a fever pitch under Donald Trump. You know, if there's one phrase I would eliminate from the English language, it's both sides. Democrats are mm -hmm. feckless and spineless, but they're not responsible for the elevation of violence, the uh, hatred directed against the others. That's been the opposition and really has vastly expanded since when? Since 2015, since the advent of Donald Trump, not from anything the Democrats have done. From an audience who is afraid, uh, they are concerned, they feel like their votes are gonna be overturned that we had during a primary. Uh, from an audience who is afraid right now and really stressed out, what advice or insight do you have? What can we do, if anything? I would direct your audience to my live show where I give all these answers, and that is every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, you can find it at Alan Lichtman YouTube, A-L-L-A-N Lichtman YouTube. I also have an op-ed that's already come out in the New York Daily News that goes through all of this. And my answer is you've got to get involved. That's the only way positive change occurs when it occurs from the bottom up, voters and Americans getting involved the way we saw in the 1960s with the civil rights movement and the women's movement doing things that no one thought was possible.